Thanks for inviting me uh, to this session. As, as you see from uh, outline of my talk, the problem is, is logic uh, normative? And if yes, in which sense? So the first uh, problem is to, to distinguish some meanings, uh, meanings of normativity. Uh, this topic was discussed by Professor Nenska, so uh, my, my task is not so uh, systematic, so I distinguish only two meanings. One is that X is normative, with X consists of rules, prescriptions, commands, etc. Uh, examples are legal orders, moral recommendations, instructions. Of course, uh, X uh, consists a, at least of some norms, so it is not necessary that X consists that only norms or rules, I, I will use these two terms as equivalent, uh, that, that consists only of norms or rules. This is a relatively simple concept. The second is much more uh, complicated. X is normative. If X requires an appeal to rules in order to be explained in a sense or understood. It's why complicated, because if at first the concept of explanation or, 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 or understanding is not easy or not, 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 not simple. Secondly, examples show how complex is the issue. For example, we, we must explain culture, or so-called normative theory of culture says that it is impossible to explain or even understand culture without referring to some norms. However, as we know, it is not easy to, to explain why and to which extent and so on. Second, uh, 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 for example, therapy. So we, we explain effectivity of a therapy according to, uh, to roles. Uh, I, uh, I will take my, 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 my problem as more easy, so I, will, I am interested in first meaning. However, I, I, I don't say that uh, second is not relevant for, for logic. So some digress the, the <coughs> digressions. Uh, first, uh, assume that uh, one claims that rules are reducible to fact. So, we, we, the, the, this means that we, for example, adopt naturalistic standpoints. However, both problems are still present. Uh, uh, however, of course, we must rephrase the problem of uh, normativity. Digression two. Uh, much is it dependent, uh, dependent as rules are understood, that is, whether are, as technical, teleological, etc., or whether as principal or sui generis, so to speak, uh, and independent of goals, text. So, for example, that moral rules are independent of utilities. Uh, Things. So, so there are absolute in this. So principal norms uh, are uh, is, is a validity content is not dependent on some uh, practical reasons. And uh, the third digression is quite advanced from philosophical point of view, but important for lawyers, for example, normativity and neo-Kantianism. So now Kant, yes, particularly from so-called Badenian school, uh, represented by Windelbad and Rickert as principal thinkers, and Hans Kelsen, a famous legal philosopher or legal theoretician, belonged to this tradition, located normativity in the transcendental sphere. Roughly speaking, very roughly, uh, in the 
the transcendentality, transcendental in the Kantian and neo-Kantian understanding, not scholastic one, it is important to distinguish these two traditions, is a counterpart of the transcendental subject. So logic, ethics, and aesthetics are transcendental and concern the third world. This term, this label was used before Popper in German, and this uh, I, uh, intuitions are now quite awful because it was called Dritte Reich. Uh, uh, so this world is constituted by so-called transcendental norms, cognitive, epistemic, and so on. Uh, this is philosophically very advanced, maybe even deep, however, not easy to to grasp even. However, he, historically it is important. Now two masters or two important philosophers, not philosophers, one logician, second a great philosopher, who explicitly said about normativity of logic. Frege, I, I have two quotations from his posthumous uh, writings, I mean, were pu pu published as posthumous writings uh, in uh, 1891 in a text called Logik. Uh, he says that, so this is a translation of course, logic has a closer affinity with ethics. The property good has a significance for the lat uh, latter analogous to that which property true has for the former. And very similar, six uh, years later, also in the text under the title logic, he says, like logic, like ethics logic can also be called a normative et uh, science. How must I think in order to reach the goal truth? According to our historical knowledge, Frege studied some uh, text of uh, no Kantian related, no Kantians related to Badinian schools, particularly Bruno Bau, a professor in Vienna, where uh, Frege studied, and he was influenced by this transcendental idea of, of logic. So, good or goodness and truth were on the level of transcendental reality. Husserl was maybe more practical according to him and he kept this view in Logische Untersuchungen, then in um, formal and transcendental uh, uh, formal and transcendental logics. Uh, so, so almost uh, by the entire, uh, his uh, scientific academic career. So he says that logic is a science uh, on science. Its goal is normative and practical because it helps us to achieve cognitive uh, goals, scientific goals, but however, uh, this practical, uh, 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 pr practical goal of logic can be effectively achieved done only in virtue of a priori validity of theoretical logic. So the problem, uh, what Husserl meant by this uh, a priori validity is uh, it goes too far beyond uh, even this, this talk, so I will uh, skip it and I rely on your understanding. And because now we, we must have some theoretical rules uh, related to phenomenological epistemology, which lead us a priori to correct so-called pure logic, but pure in, the, in a very, very special uh, uh, sense. Now a comparison of Frege and Husserl but only one point I take into account. So Frege basically reduced logic to validity of inferences. 
So he was interested in formal logic. Not surprising because he, in fact, he created modern logic, modern deductive or mathematical logic. And he, and he was not very interested in methodology or philosophy of science or more in semantics, but we can also omit this problem. However, to Husserl, logic is a guide of our uh, cognitive activities. So he, uh, he, he, his idea was very close to, to the very traditional account in Germany, namely where logic or logik in German was a part of uh, Erkenntnis Lehre theory of knowledge. There were huge books, for example, written by Wilhelm Wundt, a very famous philosopher of the second half of the 19th, uh, 19th century, Allgemeine Log Logik und Erkenntnistheorie. Also Husserl delivered lectures, Logic and Theory of Knowledge. Several such lectures were published from his uh, Nachlass. Uh, so, uh, uh, Frege certainly anticipated uh, the modern understanding of logic. Husserl was much more traditional. Uh, now, a modern example this is an American philosopher and logical professor, uh, I guess, uh, in Arizona, in Tucson. Uh, he uh, published a textbook of logic and he says that logic is a study of correct reasoning. Okay, but correctness is a norma normative concept. Evalu evaluation of correctness appeals to some rules. Still, the word reasoning is very vague and he doesn't explain it very closely. Now, uh, 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 we can say that logic is a, is a collection of devices of correct, good, etc., thinking, but it doesn't speak very, very much. More, uh, uh, the first approximation is that, uh, at least in is a very popular distinction in Polish, uh, teaching of logic, uh, or general teaching of logic for general student that we distinguish logic in broad, in the broad sense, sensu largo, uh, which covers semiotics or semantics, formal logic, and methodology of now philosophy of science. So the course of logic, if it is extensive, sufficiently extensive, one year, covers these three uh, parts, and this is a Polish tradition of teaching logic. But in second sense, logic in the narrow, uh, formal logic is, as, is, is considered as the theory of deductive inferences. And in fact, Daniel Bonevac in his book, uh, gives gives a, a account of outline of this logic, so reasoning can be understood as as inference. So uh, first the limitation uh, normativity in uh, this logic in the broad sense is, is is obvious, and we have several examples. For example, defining logical division, classification, and so on. So rules concerning such operations are derivative of cognitive or practical goals. For example, if you like to uh, give a correct definition of a word, you must follow some rules in order definition uh, satisfied uh, its goals. It must, you must avoid such errors like ignotum per ignotum or idem per idem, 
because in other case you, you will not explain the word to, to someone who wants to, 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 to know what, what, what the term uh, means, or your uh, explanation is in, incomplete if uh, your definition is too wide, too broad, or, or, or too narrow. So obviously, rules of, for, for definitions of logical classifications are related to some uh, technical, uh, practical, or theological, because they have some theoretical um, justification of, or aspects, but there is nothing to, to, say, uh, to say more. A more problematic, there's examples from so environment of logic, environment or introduction to logic, semiotics sometimes. Uh, more problematic, more difficult, this more or less obvious example uh, concern uh, um, a, no, a normative theory of induction. Because as, as you know, there is a controversy between, symbolically speaking, Popper and Carnap, is induction a good method at all? According to Carnap, yes. According to Port Popper, only in very primitive cases, maybe in daily life, but not in, in, uh, in science. So uh, 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 for the, the, the digression, Mm, Kazimir Ajdukiewicz, Kazimierz Ajdukiewicz, a very important Polish philosopher, distinguished three kinds of reasoning. So we say reasonings rather than inferences. Rozumowanie, not, not only wnioskowanie. So, uh, uh, so according to Ajdukiewicz, I will a little bit correct or, or, or change his terminology. Uh, his term was more pragmatic. He says, first is uh, the deductive reasonings when a conclusion logic logically follows from premises. Then we have probabilistic, roughly speaking, inductive um, reason reasoning uh, in which uh, conclusion has a degree of probability according to, to premises. And then we have pointless or wordless reasoning. You have uh, examples. Mm, uh, for example, a trivial one. If today is uh, Thursday, uh, 2 plus 2 is 4. Um, uh, obviously, this is a jo joke. Uh, then less artificial was, quot was quoted today. Yes, based on super superstitions, for example, that if today is uh, Friday, you should abstain from trying to pass an examination. Many people believes in su uh, believe in such. And of course, once again about induction. Induction is, according to Idukevich, in second group of probabilistic reasoning. Uh, but uh, uh, according to Popper, is and Carnap shares this view. According to, uh, 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 to, to, to Popper, is practically in the third group. Has no scientific value. Now uh, about normativity of logic in the strict sense, and I guess that we can explain this issue almost completely. I will say why almost. So uh, you have uh, uh, some formulas. So it's a definition of logic uh, which uh, goes back to Tarski. Uh, can be f find in his, uh, in his writings from the uh, 1930s in uh, of the last century. He says that A belongs to logic even only if X is a consequence of the empty set of set sentences. So to theologians, we can say that it is the closest approximation of creatio ex nihilo. 
th this definition uh, looks strange for, uh, for, for, for the first side because the question is, what does it mean that you can infer something from the empty, empty set? However, we have... Uh, oh, sorry. So uh, uh, there is a, uh, a scheme. Uh, we have a deduction theorem which justifies this definition. Just deduction theorem discovered by R. Brown and Tarski uh, is one of the most important metallurgical accounts of uh, the concept of deduction. So if, if we have the deduction theorem, we can justify Tarski's definition of, uh, 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 of logic. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, not, uh, the, the next step is to observe so-called weak completeness theorem. This is this last formula. Yes, last one. Yeah, that uh, that uh, A is a consequence is, is, is inferable, is deducible from the empty set, even only if uh, uh, A is universally valid. And this is an interesting feature of logical tautologies, namely that they are independent of any uh, concrete subject matter. So the, uh, deducibility from the empty set of, of premise set exactly corresponds with universal uh, validity. So when we remem remember about this property, take it into account of this property, so this deriva the, the derivability from em the empty set is nothing particularly strange. So uh, on one uh, uh, on one hand, we have uh, idea that uh, logic doesn't require any particular premises in order to establish, uh, uh, syntactically establish the theorems of logic. On the second hand, we have idea that we have universal, universal Validity. Now uh, look uh, at this uh, symbol of uh, derivability, of provability, as coding logical deductive inference rules. So the completeness theorem establishes the parity between inference rules and tautologies as consequences of the empty set. Disparity concerns universality. We can a little bit uh, generalize this account by defining uh, a theory, any theory as, uh, as a set uh, which contains own logical consequences. So that is a definition of a deductive, uh, deductive system and, and it is so-called uh, strong completeness theorem, so such a, 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 a set X or a theory T is, um, is complete, sometimes we say semantically complete, even only if, uh, if something is deducible from this theory, it is also true in all models. Of this theory. Uh, and now we have uh, a very, very strict account of the normativity of mm, deductive logic. Uh, some conclusions for any logic L satisfying the completeness theorem, that is, with the universal parity between rules and theorems, the Hume thesis does not hold. The Hume thesis says that norms, rules are not 
derivable, not provable, from not deducible from non-normative statements. And it, 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 this Hume thesis doesn't depend what, whether we recognize or, or think about norms as forming a special semantic category. So the problem of mm, truth uh, of the question whether norms are true or false doesn't matter this this problem. So you can even provably model, in general, model logic, then deontic statements are not provided from non deontic statements. However, in the case of, of logic, this thesis does not hold because we have a parity between uh, um, universal validity of rules in pure logic, once again, and uh, tautological har status character of statements which correspond to such rules. Uh, otherwise speaking, rules are produced from theorems, and theorems are produced from rules, or correct in correct theorem theorem uh, in a correct theorem and correct in a correct rule means practically the same. Uh, correct rules correspond with sentences true in all possible words. However, I don't like this terminology very much. It is quite impressive, but according to the uh, title of the paper, it was like very much. Possible words is uh, poetry plus universal algebra. And if we skip poetry, we, 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 we can ex explicate the concept of possible world by uh, purely algebraic, uh, algebraic terms. So now there is a question whether this approach can be generalized. Uh, now, with some complications, and uh, of course, these generalizations raise problems and objections, and doubts, well known. First, relatively easy generalization is what about mathematical rules, for instance, the, rules, the role of mathematical indu in induction. So, according to many, many uh, uh, mathematicians and, and, uh, and specialists in the foundations of mathematics, so mathematics is not so very far from from logic. Uh, logic uh, people who philosophers who share logicism say that there is no essential difference between mathematics and logic. So we can simply subsume uh, 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 mathematics under logic. So this approach applies to logic entirely. However, of course, it, it assumes a special philosophical position about, about mathematics. Uh, Frege, who, who, who was one of the classic of ro uh, logicism, observed that there is a similarity between uh, mathematics and, and logic, more strictly uh, between arithmetic and logic, because arithmetic is almost so general as, as logic. So the role of mathematical induction belongs to arithmetics of natural numbers. So roughly speaking, we can say that this idea of universality applies at least to some parts of, of mathematics. According to Frege, it doesn't apply to geometry, for example. What about theoretical uh, natural science, uh, theoretical physics, for example? Well, there is an instrumentalistic conception of uh, uh, laws of nature, uh, defended, for example, by Maurice Schlick, and according to him, Univer, univer, uh, universal law of nature uh, 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 are so-called uh, 
tickets for rules of inferences in natural science. So they give us themes in order to produce observable consequences from some initial, uh, initial conditions. And the cost of this approach is very high because we must uh, abandon the realistic view, view about theories. But theoretically, it is still possible. A proviso answer is the disregarding some philosophical worries. If we have a solid universal body of theoretical knowledge, independently whether it is mathematical, logical or not, we can always say that rules of inference and theorems correspond. Now a surprise, or even two surprises, one is that Rules of empirical induction cannot be generalized in this way. Empirical infinite induction. So it is a strong argument against inductivism, of course. Because we, why? No, it, it can be shown by comparing mathematical induction and empirical induction. It, it is fundamental step inductive step, which is crucial for mathematical induction, is not available in empirical induction. That it makes, of course, we can try by probability. However, all known um, attempts to justify induction in this way are still quite imperfect. The second surprise is that also the ontic uh, domain is not subjected to this to this uh, treatment so theor it is important for legal philosophers for, for moral philosophers because even if we have some We are sure that there are some universal uh, uh, analogies or correlations between so-called uh, perfect deontic words or perfect moral words and our real words. So we are not able to infer, infer uh, rules from facts. And reversely, we, can, we cannot also infer facts from rules. In order to show a simple example, I like this example very much. I guess that this example was several times discussed in my former department, uh, Department of Legal Theory in, in the 70s. Um, I think that was raised by Professor Franciszek Studnitsky, um, and the, the problem was this. Obs you see a person who walks and doesn't smoke. And now you cannot infer from this fact that he or she obeys the rule smoking is unhealthy, prohibited for some reasons, and so on. So you must know something more in order to say that rules are obeys. Self-control, as we had in, in, in the first lecture, something more. However, observing of behavior, or even observing self-control, yes, doesn't help. Because I, I can be sure that this person is very well self-controlled. However, it says me, says me nothing about his relation to, 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 to truth. Eventually, I can state the hypothesis that maybe that this person doesn't smoke because he or she obeys uh, the role that 
don't smoke. However, it is only hypothesis, not an inference. So, still we can defend the autonomy of so-called normat normative sphere. So there are two extremes, or three, uh, three, three cases. Clear situation in pure logic, I mean in deductive logic, where rules and, and theorems are equivalent. Second, uh, the opposite situation in deontic case. And in between, the issue is problematic and depending on many additional, mostly philosophical premises. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, time for questions, please. I am interested in uh, neurological or psychological explanation. Why uh, logical rules or laws of inferences are so imposing on us? For instance, I have a theorem to prove. It may be a very difficult theorem, but when I understand the proof and when I can dissolve this proof into smaller steps and I clearly see uh, the why I should accept this step when I have accepted the other ones. So then uh, everything is extremely clear for my man mind. Uh, I have no possibility not to agree, disagree with that. So it, it enforces about, about me. F let's take a comparison with some other moral rule. Uh, for instance, you shall not kill your neighbor. And, uh, well, I can appreciate that it is something very important, and I believe that it's much more important than my theorem. But nevertheless, I don't see so clearly yes, yes. why I should accept that. And I think there should be some explanation. Could we reduce that explanation to some neural combinations or some, uh, some, some other psychological effects? This, I think, it's an extremely important thing for me. Oh, it's a question to everybody. <laughs> this is a complex problem. No, I, as on my part, but I am... I do not expect I, answer from you, perhaps comments. <laughs> okay, okay. But I have something to say about that. I am a naturalist, so I, I think that we should explain everything by natural terms. I, I don't... I know that you are not skeptical about that. So I am not a biologist, but I discussed this question with uh, some biologists. Um, so I tried to study. So it seems that our genetic structure is quite ordered mathematically. And in my view, uh, the space of, let's say, this is a very rough explanation. I, I, I could do my much more uh, detailed structure of our biological structure, of our uh, resources of our uh, genetic information have a quite explicit topological structure. It, it, it is studied by mathematicians. So, because logical consequence is a, is a kind of topological closure, so mathematicians found in structure, in dub, even in double helix, a, a, a very, very definite topological structure. And I guess that because we need to operate information. So the, the idea of the, uh, the rules uh, which defined or are related to consequence operations are bio biologically generated. Of course, then the language, culture, and so on, so on, what, what Jan Kozłowski said. However, 
underlying structure, I think, is responsible for, 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 for this necessity. Because deductive inference, wh wh uh, why it is so imposing, uh, as you said, namely, it is the strongest, but not sufficient, but the strong, so strongest way of protecting information. So we cannot, or it is very difficult to counteract against. Eventually, we can uh, introduce some um, stronger consequence operation, like in the case of intuitionists, for example. However, the classical consequence operation is minimal. Follow-up question. Uh, could I summarize your answer by saying that uh, our brain is embodied mathematical structure, and this is why mathematics is so clear for us, if we understand it? Not exactly, because this is natural structure, which uh, but it's a problem of real models and abstract models, relation between real models and abstract models. So in this addition, yes. Okay, the next question, please. Okay, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Um, the first question is, um, has to do with the completeness, because I, I mean, in to, somehow, if you have a, an incomplete logic, you still have some types of correctness, right? You have soundness, so you, you have some way for, you know, evaluating arguments, let's say, okay? So I, I, I'm curious about what you mean by this correlation between completeness and, cor uh, and, and uh, um, correctness, right? Uh, first of all. A second comment is, uh, so this is a, is a question, so I have a comment in regards to the notion of truth. To, to my mind, a lot depends on the concept around the corner is the concept of truth. In fact, probably the first author who tried to explain uh, logic in terms of transcendental arguments was Aristotle in Gamma Book of Metaphysics, where he tried to justify the principle of non-contradiction and he developed the transcendental argument. So actually, logic in, in Aristotle was based on transcendental move because there was uh, truth behind the corner, beyond, uh, behind the corner. And the third qu question is, uh, has to do with the, the, the fact that you propose to translate valid, universal valid statements in, into inference rules. Yes, this holds in most cases, but not in all cases. You know, in, in, in some logics, you cannot translate, uh, uh, for example, uh, axiom schemata into uh, inference rules. Uh, you know, this is a very technical issue, but you know, it's difficult, it's different to prove completeness in, in, when you handle inference rules in, in a canonical model or when you prove completeness you, uh, handling only axiomatic uh, schemata. So I'm curious, how do you manage this in your view? Thank you. Um, so, uh, You know, if you accept Hilbert's thesis that every theory can be uh, transformed into first-order theory, of course, this, there is an expense, a cost, namely you must introduce more axioms. So completeness is a trivial fact. So every first-order theory is complete in this sense. So theoretically it's okay. Uh, now, what about modal logic uh, su such, uh, you know, for me modal logic is not a logic. This is a formal theory of modalities. It is nothing against, you know, because the term logic is vague. The main reason is that if we construct semantics for modal logic, for example, Kripke's semantics of any other, so we distinguish some extra-logical facts as... Yeah. So, for example, in S S5 we, we admit only models which are transitive and, and so on. And there are extra-logical facts. You know, because there's nothing against modal logic, you can... you know. Terms and names are conventions. However, properties are not. 
I am more interested in properties than in labels. If someone wants to call modal logic logic, I have nothing against. Uh, I, but I agree that there is a problem. Sometimes soundness is OK. Uh, uh, philosophically speaking, uh, truth, why was observed by, by, by probably by Aristotle, but not by him as the first person. You know, we as human beings, but I guess even some animals are guided by facts. Truth is a counterpart of facts. You can build a good logic, even a complete logic, if you adopt fal falsity as uh, your central semantic terms, but it doesn't help very much because uh, false, false sentence, it disperses information. You are not, you, you cannot rule on or, or use information properly with, uh, by using falsities. So for this reason, truth is so important. There is a duality between truth and falsehood. However, from pragmatic point of view, truth is much more important. No, I don't like, I, 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 it is not my intention to defend this instrumentalistic view on theories. Uh, uh, even more, I, I am by my philosophical preferences a realist. However, I only show a possibility that if someone wants to consider parity between the parity between rules and theorems as something important, there is a way to do that. However, it is of course philosophically well, this first problem is much more important. Another way, which is much more philosophically intriguing to save completeness, is to admit infinite rules of inference. Oh, it is, this is something which is fascinating about human beings, that we, however, we, we are not able to use such rules. However, we can understand them, we can describe, we can even formulate logics for them. However, philosophical background of this is curious and it can lead to many, many, many um, di directions. So one direction is like, what's this, this mathematician Goddard? Uh, who, who, when he uh, analyzed Hilbert's proof of something in the theory of invariance, he said, this is not logic, this is theology, because you use rules. What is interesting and less known, that when Gedel, who was a Platonist, read or discuss with Carnap, so-called language two, I mean in which infinite induction was admitted, he told him, Professor Carnap, you, you do theology, not logic. However, maybe this is a good theology, I don't know, I am not a Michael, Michael knows better. <laughs> Okay, I think we are short of time now, unless one, one short question, yes. Very short one. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe I will to present, I will present, my name is Lukas Tistepien, and uh, I have noticed that uh, the lecture of Professor Wolenski has concerned uh, to the problem of entertainment, yes? you have said about the entertainment and I would like only to shortly comment uh, that with Theodore J. Stepien uh, in 2010 
and at the Logic Colloquium in Paris, in conference in the Paris, the conference of ASL, we have uh, we presented uh, the talk. Uh, during the, this talk, we uh, presented the definition of atomic entertainment and classical entertainment. And this mm, definition, this result, avoid to allow the problem of, parado of paradoxes of material implication. So we have also proved that uh, the piano is arithmetic system uh, built uh, with applying the logic based on uh, atomic entertainment. Um, uh, the consequences of piano's arithmetic system uh, built by applying the logic based on atomic entertainment uh, are equal to the consequence of piano's arithmetic system built by applying the classical logic. So, by using the logic based of atomic entertainment, we can uh, construct we can construct Piano's arithmetic system. And it is only the my question comment. is thank you very much. No, it was the information. Not good for you. Only one may one information. Excuse me. Uh, the abstract of this talk uh, was published in the Bulletin of Symbolic Logic. So, if you are interested. Okay, so, uh, 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 yes, yeah, uh, but, but uh, you know, I, I prefer using the concept of entertainment as meta, uh, metalogical. So, but I understand attempts to uh, consider entertainment sign as a logical constant. And I mean that you uh, incorporate uh, Entitlement into language of logic itself, not metalogic. Yes, that's right. Uh, we construct. Uh, we, we calculus. Construct, yes. We yeah. we construct non-classical logic based on atomic entitlement. Yes. yes. Okay. And so we we we, ge we gave a definition when. Uh, yeah, no, no. Okay, I I know that, but the, the, the difference is that this all concepts which I used are metalogical, uh -huh. but your approach is intralogical. Yes, okay. Okay, thank you very thank much. You very much. Uh, we'll meet again at uh, 4 p.m.